Did Satan create Islam? Galatians 1 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So the brief background and description of Islam. Muhammad's first revelation was an event described in Islam as taking place in 610 AD, during which the Islamic prophet Muhammad was visited by the Archangel Gabriel, who revealed to him the beginnings of what would later become the Quran. The event took place in a cave called Hira, located on the mountain Jabal an Nur near Mecca. Islam teaches the rejection of Jesus' divinity, that Jesus was not the Son of God, nor teaches the crucifixion, death and resurrection, but was raised alive to heaven. Jesus is no more than a messenger repeating the same message of the ages. That is basically the prophets of the Old Testament. A second early image of Jesus is an end time figure arising mostly from the Hadith. Muslim tradition constructs a narrative seeing Jesus awaiting the end of time when he will descend to the earth and fight the Antichrist, championing the cause of Islam. When after doing so, he will point to the primacy of Muhammad and die a natural death. 2 Corinthians 11 But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So I want to read again the description of what happened with Muhammad and the event that took place which created Islam. Okay? Muhammad's first revelation was an event described in Islam as taking place in 610 AD. Okay, that's that's 550 years after the gospel, during which the Islamic prophet Muhammad was visited by the archangel Gabriel, who revealed to him the beginnings of what would later become known the Quran. The event took place in a cave called Hira. Right. I want you to remember those two things. The event took place in a cave and it was the angel Gabriel. We're going to read from the book of Adam and Eve, chapter 27, which is referred to by Paul in 2 Corinthians 11. So here we go. Second tempting of Adam and Eve, the devil takes on the form of a beguiling light. That's the introduction to the chapter. When Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued in prayer, that's Adam and Eve, and how God communed with them and comforted them and how he had accepted their offering, Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his hosts in his hands was a flashing fire, and they were in a great light. He then placed his throne near the mouth of the cave, that's the word cave, because he could not enter into it by reason of their prayers, and he shed light into the cave, until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve, while his hosts began to sing praises. And Satan did this in order that when Adam saw the light, he should think within himself that this that it was a heavenly light, and that Satan's hosts were angels, and that God had sent them to watch at the cave, and to give him light in the darkness. So that when Adam came out of the cave and saw them, and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan, then he would overcome Adam thereby, and a second time humble him before God. When therefore Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts. Yet as they were trembling, Adam said to Eve, Look at that great light, and at those many songs of praise, and at that host standing outside, that they do not come into us. Do not tell us what they say, or whence they come, or what is the meaning of this light. What those praises are, wherefore they have been sent hither, and why they do not come in. If they were from God, they would come in to the cave, and would tell us their errand. When Adam stood up and prayed, unto God with a fervent heart, and said, O Lord, is there in the world another God than thou, who created angels, and filled them with light, and sent them to keep us, who would come with them? But lo, we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. They are in a great light, they sing loud praises. If they are 
of some other god than thou, tell me. And if they are sent by thee, inform me of the reason for which thou hast sent them. No sooner had Adam said this than an angel from God appeared to him in the cave and said to him, O oh Adam, fear not, this is Satan and his hosts. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time he was hidden in the serpent, but this time he has come to you in the similitude of an angel of light, in order that when you worshipped him he might enthrall you in the very presence of God. Then the angel went from Adam and seized Satan at the opening of the cave and stripped him of the faint he had assumed and brought him in his own light, uh, hideous form to Adam and Eve who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, this hideous form has been his, has been his ever since God made him fall from heaven. He could not have come near you in it. Therefore did he transform himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and his hosts from Adam and Eve, and said to them, Fear not, God created Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel went from them. Okay, so we've 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 just established that the, the Islamic doctrine is based on the deceit of Satan transforming himself into an angel of light, coming to a cave. Uh, which is referred to by Paul in 2 Corinthians 11th chapter and, and the book of Adam and Eve, the 27th chapter. What we need to understand about Islam is that um, they claim to be descendants of Abraham according to the flesh when the gospel says flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. They, um, they claim to be the uh, almost pharisaical style proponents of Sharia law when again it says law is not faith um, righteousness cannot come by the law uh, the law is for sinners so we see that again it is a punishment akin to the secondary bond laws that were uh, put upon the children of Israel for the golden calf transgression Another characteristic is they take on the parable of Paul where he speaks of the children of the bondwoman and the children of the free. Um, because Paul mentions in, in conjunction with the uh, pharisaical doctrine of the uh, Old Covenant that the uh, Abraham's uh, son Ishmael was the children of the bondwoman. Now, they claim to be the descendants of according to the flesh of, of Ishmael, who was <clears throat> cast out, cast out of the children of the bondwoman. Uh, he went wandering in, uh, in, in Paran, which uh, that wilderness was by Mecca, interestingly enough. And what do the children of the bondwoman uh, practice? They practice law. Now, Islam has its own... Sharia law, which is very similar to um, what the pharisaical mosaic law was observing, which was stoning women for adultery, killing people you know, for, the, for their transgressions. Now, again, Christ, he came to remove those secondary bond laws, as I was saying, to give us, to give us life where the law had come and... Uh, ministered death to us because of the deceitfulness of sin that's in our flesh so we can see here the all-encompassing relation between the prophecies of uh, and, and the teachings of paul and how it exposes islam as nothing more than a satanic deception into another gospel <laughs>